Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 22nd monthly web workshop on Fluke Connect. Today's topic is how to use the Fluke Connect mobile app with a handheld tool. I will be providing you with an overview of how to do that along with a video demonstration. My name is Sean Carta. I am a tier three technical support engineer and the Fluke lead. So a few housekeeping items before I begin the presentation. Phones will be muted during the entire presentation. Feel free to ask questions at any time by typing into the question section of your screen. Please limit your questions to the topic of today's session. Questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. And the session today will be recorded and uploaded to our Fluke Connect website in the next few days. I'll provide you with the link on where to access those videos at the end of the presentation. Here's our agenda for today. I'll start with a high level overview of Fluke Connect for those of you who are new to the software. Then I'll cover how to connect your tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. Next, I'll show you how to use the capture measurements features. Then I'll review how to use the data logging feature. Next, I'll show you how to share measurements from the Fluke Connect mobile app. And finally, I will answer any questions that you may have. I'll begin today with the Fluke Connect overview. I just want to cover a few basic facts about Fluke Connect for anyone that may be new to the software. This is very important information that will help you understand the types of software available and how the data flows through the system. And it lays the foundation for you so that you can go from here to build your knowledge. Fluke Connect works with over 80 different tools in 11 different categories, including digital multimeters, clamp meters, installation testers, vibration meters, scope meters, process meters, insulation testers, infrared cameras, power loggers, and power quality monitors. The easiest way to tell if a tool will work with the Fluke Connect software is if it has the letters FC in the model name. So the 376 FC clamp meter, 1664 installation tester, T3000 FC temperature module, all would be Fluke Connect enabled. The only exception is the Fluke suite of thermal image cameras. Most of them do work with the Fluke Connect software, but do not include FC in the model name. And Fluke Connect is available in 73 different countries. One other important note, the Fluke Connect measurement software is 100% free, so please give it a try if you haven't already. Our next screen shows you how the flow of data um, <clears throat> happens within the Fluke Connect system. So here's an overall flow of how the data is stored and moved through the various systems in a typical scenario. And step number one, let's say you have an intermittent blower motor problem with a rooftop HVAC package unit. So in step number two, you go out and you grab your handy dandy 376 FC clamp meter to diagnose the issue and you connect it to the blower motor. In step number three, the, fluke, the 376 FC communicates the readings from the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app via a Bluetooth connection. Then in step number four, the Fluke Connect mobile app will upload the readings to the Fluke Connect cloud where they are permanently stored. Now, if the cell phone is out of range, the data will be stored on the phone until it reconnects to a cell signal or a Wi-Fi signal. And then finally, in step number five, users can access their Fluke Connect data in the cloud via any web-enabled device, such as a web browser, the mobile app, or a desktop software. So as I just noted at the end of the previous slide, the Fluke Connect software is available in three different applications. The Fluke Connect mobile app. This is the key interface for capturing measurements from the tools. The Fluke Connect web app. This is where you go to create assets and perform analysis. And finally, the Fluke Connect desktop app. And this is the key interface for downloading thermal images and creating thermal image reports. The 
The next thing that is important for you to know is that Fluke Connect software comes in three different tiers. This is often one of the more confusing aspects of the Fluke Connect software, so here's a quick overview. The first tier is the Fluke Connect measurements tier, and this is available to all users for free. This tier enables users to capture measurements from their tools and save the data to the cloud, just like I explained in one of the previous slides. The second tier is the Fluke Connect Assets tier. Um, the Fluke Connect Assets tier comes with a one-year free trial user, excuse me, comes with a one-year free trial for users and is $250 per license per person after that. So this tier includes all of the features available in the free measurements tier, plus asset management, asset health tracking, and work order management. So that's the middle tier. And finally, we have the top tier or the third tier. This is the Fluke Connect Condition Monitoring tier. And this tier includes the first year of software subscription and the purchase of hardware, which is either the power monitor or the gateway and sensors, the vibration gateway and sensors. And this tier, as you might imagine, includes all of the features available in the Fluke Connect measurements tier, all of the features available in the Fluke Connect assets tier. Okay, so here is a video to show you an overview of the various Fluke Connect mobile app features and some of what we will cover today. Don't worry if you cannot hear the audio, the voiceover information is displayed on the screen for the most part. So hopefully that provided you with a bit of an overview of some of the features that you have access to and you can use in the Fluke Connect mobile app. We'll be talking about some of those features in more detail during the course of the presentation. Our next section is how to connect your tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. I'll cover the three basic steps to connect your tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app and then I'll show you a video of how that works in action. So step number one, you take your cell phone or your mobile device and you enter your username and password and click the sign in option. So you log into the Fluke Connect mobile app and that will bring you to the Fluke Connect mobile app homepage. So you've got three different sections of the screen here. After you've logged into the Fluke Connect mobile app on your phone, set the phone down, move on to your tool, whatever tool you may be using, turn on the tool, 
So in this case, for the 376 FC clamp meter, we just spin the dial to turn on the tool. And then the next step, and this is very important, is to press the Fluke Connect fan button on the tool. This will activate the Bluetooth functionality on the tool itself. And to verify that it's actually been turned on, you want to check the tool display for the little Fluke fan icon. Once you see that fan icon, you'll know that the tool is now broadcasting a Bluetooth signal. Third step, you go back to your Fluke Connect mobile app, tap the Connect and Capture Measurement section. I know this doesn't look like a button, but it is this main area in the top here. So if you click in this little black area where it says Connect and Capture Measurements, the next thing you'll see is a list of all Bluetooth enabled tools within range. So if I have my 376 FC turned on and my T3000 FC temperature reader, um, maybe a voltmeter, I, I can see all of those tools turned on and available for me to connect to here. In our case, we have one tool, the 376 FC, and it's visible again because we've turned on the Bluetooth functionality on the tool. So I simply click the connect button here and at that point, I will be able to see the reading from the tool in the Fluke Connect mobile app. So the tool itself says negative 0.4, and the app also says negative 0.4. So at this point, we've connected our tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app so we can record readings in the app. We can save a reading in the app. We can do a share live call like you saw in the video you just watched where I could show this information live to my manager or my team lead and I can download these readings as well. Now I will be showing you a recording that I made on exactly how to connect your tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. So here we have our tool. It's in the off position. There's nothing displayed on the screen. And we've already completed step one because we've logged into the Fluke Connect mobile app and we're looking at the home page. So I turn the tool on and select the appropriate uh, parameter. And you'll notice that there's no Bluetooth signal uh, displayed on the tool display. So I'll wanna turn that feature on. I press the Fluke Connect button and now I can see that the Bluetooth signal from the tool is being broadcast. So from there, I'll go to the connect and capture measurement screen because I want to connect my tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app and capture measurements from my tool into the Fluke Connect mobile app. So I tap on that area of the screen. I wait for my tool to appear in the list of tools available. And I select this 376 FC yellow button by tapping on it. And once my Fluke Connect mobile app has connected to my tool, you'll see that the reading on the tool is the same as the reading on the Fluke Connect mobile app. So negative 0.7 amps, negative 0.7 amps. And the great thing about this is now that you've seen this in action and you know how to connect the 376 FC clamp meter to the Fluke Connect mobile app, you know virtually how to connect all of the other Bluetooth enabled Fluke Connect tools. It works pretty much the same way. You log into the Fluke Connect mobile app, you turn on your tool, you turn on the Bluetooth functionality on your tool, and then you click on the connect and capture option in the Fluke Connect mobile app, select the tool, and then you're connected. Okay, our next section is using the capture measurements features. I'm so excited to show you all the great things the Fluke Connect mobile app can do. Most Fluke Connect users never go beyond capturing a measurement, but there are so many more features available in the app that you can and should take advantage of. Some of them are free, like the camera feature and the clipboard feature, which enable you to use the Fluke Connect mobile app with non-Fluke Connect tools, like the 325 clamp meter or the 1662 installation tester. So you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a new tool just to make it work with the software. That's important for you to know. 
or you could use the Fluke connector, which enables you to connect multiple Bluetooth-enabled tools simultaneously, so you can read amps and temperature at the same time with two different tools. Or you can leverage the assets and work order functionality with the one-year free trial Fluke Connects assets license. And uh, you get that automatically when you sign up. There's nothing you need to do. As soon as you create your Fluke Connect account, you automatically get the one-year free trial. So use that to track your asset health over time and create and assign work orders for out-of-range readings to your teammate to follow up on when you're out uh, on vacation the next week. So let's start with the homepage. The Fluke Connect mobile app homepage has three main areas. At the top, we have the connect and capture measurement section. This is where you connect your tool to the mobile app in order to save measurement readings, like you just saw in the video. The middle section is setup logging or monitoring. This area is only available to those with a paid software subscription and only works with a limited number of tools at the moment, including the 3540 FC power monitor and the 3502 FC and 3561 FC vibration gateway and sensor. And last but not least, at the very bottom, we've got the My Work Order section. And again, that functionality is available for free for one year when you sign up for the software. Okay, now we're going to discuss the capture measurement features in more detail. This is really the meat and potatoes of the app. And the first and most important feature in capture measurements is connecting to a tool, which I covered in our last, in our last section. So you're all pros at this step by now. Um, remember, you just tap on the capture the connect and capture measurement section you wait for your tool to appear and once it does you simply collect on that or click on that tool so when you click on that tool you'll make the connection and you'll be able to see the readings in the fluke connect mobile app that you're seeing on the tool and from this point we've got two options we can do an in-app recording if you see next to the uh the arrow here by the number three. This is our record option. So this would enable us to create an in-app recording. It's important to note that the maximum recording length for this type of recording or data logging is 10 minutes. And that is so, that is by design, that is so that we do not take up too much space on your cell phone because this file is temporarily stored on your cell phone. So we don't want to do more than 10 minutes. The next option is the save button which will take a single snapshot of the reading. So you'll basically get like a, a photo or a moment in time versus a recording. So those are your two options. So if we were going to follow through on the steps for the in-app recording, we would simply press this little record button and what you'll notice is that the record button toggles from a circle to a square and you'll see a timer next to that uh, button as well that timer will go up to a maximum of 10 minutes to do to uh, perform the in-app recording or you can just watch and wait say maybe you need five minutes of recording time so you can watch and wait for it to go to the five minute mark once you're done with the in-app recording you press this button again to stop the recording and at that point, you'll be presented with this screen in the Food Connect mobile app. At the very top, you'll see what the recording looks like. So you can see there's not much activity in the in-app recording that I performed. Um, but, it, but it's great to be able to see and visualize the graph, the recorded information from that in-app recording. From here, I can take this information and I can assign it to an asset, either an existing asset or create a brand new excuse me, a brand new asset. Maybe this information is from the um, uh, HVAC system or a boiler or a motor, and I want to track that asset, that the health of that asset over time, so I can assign it to an asset. Maybe this reading is out of range. It's too high or it's too low, and I want to assign it to a work order and assign that work order to my teammate Charlie so that during the next shift, he can go out and inspect this particular asset because there's a problem with it. I can add in some notes. Hey, Charlie, this doesn't look right to me. Can you please check it out? I can add a voice note, click this button and record a message to Charlie. 
um, I can also share this information. This is our universal share sign from within the app. So if I click on this, I can email this reading to anybody, anybody inside the team or outside the team. So maybe I'm a contractor and I wanna send this information to my customer. I can do that using this option. If I decide that I don't want this information anymore, I can go ahead and use the trash can to delete it. Or if I'm just finished, using this information and assigning it to where I want to assign it and adding notes, I can simply click the done button. And this will save this information. It will upload it to the Fluke Connect cloud where it's permanently stored in my account until I delete it. And then I can access that information with any web enabled device. So here are the steps for saving a single measurement. We just covered the in-app recording option, which is this option here. If we wanted to save a single reading uh, that you see here, we would simply click the big yellow save button, and then we're going to be presented with that same screen again. So here's the, the measurement we just saved. And now again, we can assign it to an asset, a work order, add notes or voice notes. We can share this reading, delete it and start over, or simply click the done button. Next in capture measurements is the camera feature. So you'll see at the very top bar here on the very far left side, there's a, a little icon of an old fashioned camera. And if I click on this option, I can activate the camera on my phone from within the Fluke Connect mobile app. What's great about this is this is especially handy if your tool is not Fluke Connect enabled. Like if you were using the 325 clamp meter, you could just take a photo of the reading on the tool and save it to your Fluke Connect account. It's a quick way to electronically capture readings <clears throat> without having to write them down. Next in capture measurements is the electronic clipboard. So next to the camera button, we've got what looks like a little clipboard with a plus sign next to it. So we can add measurements manually using the electronic clipboard. So this enables us to manually enter measurements from non-FC or non-Fluke Connect enabled tools like the 1662 installation tester or the 117 multimeter. You simply tap on the icon, enter in the reading that you've taken, and then click the next button and then select what type of reading it is. Is it amps, is it volts, is it Fahrenheit, is it Celsius? And then click the done button. <clears throat> so you can enter measurements um, using non-Fluke Connect tools by leveraging the features of the Fluke Connect camera and the Fluke Connect clipboard. And these, these features are great because like I said, you don't need to have a Fluke Connect enabled tools. Maybe you can't afford to upgrade your clamp meter or installation tester right now. So you have these options as a workaround. It's not as streamlined as using the Fluke Connect enabled tool, but it's still better than using a paper and pencil and writing everything down. Next in the capture measurements is the Fluke connector, and that's going to be the icon you see in the very middle of the top section of your app. It looks like the little Fluke Connect fan icon. When using the Fluke Connect mobile app, you can connect up to 11 tools at one time, 10 using the Bluetooth options, and one using Wi-Fi, with each instrument sending a reading to be displayed simultaneously on the app. So for example, if you wanted to simulate a three-phase three power monitor, like our 3540 FC power monitor, you could connect three V3000 FCs or three A3001 FCs and watch each phase separately in your mobile app. Or if you were checking a rooftop HVAC air conditioner, you might want to check the volts, the amps, and the temperature. And you can do that by connecting three different tools, the V3000FC, the A3000FC, and the T3000FC. So this is a very cool feature for monitoring different parameters using different tools simultaneously. Next in capture measurements is the assign work orders. Use this option to add or create a new work order while you're out in the field taking a measurement reading or assign the measurement reading to an existing work order. So let's say you're in the field doing your normal maintenance, taking readings and documenting them when you notice that a reading is out of range. Maybe the temperature reading is too high on your chiller unit. Instead of having to stop what you're doing, 
and call your manager or another technician, you can just use this button to create a work order right then and there and assign that out of range reading to that work order. Then you can assign that work order to your teammate or manager so that it can be inspected and repaired during the next shift. And when you assign a work order to someone, they will automatically receive a pop-up notification with the work order number saying that it has been assigned to them. So they will be aware of it. <clears throat> and remember, you get access to all of the work order functionality for one year for free with the free Fluke Connect Assets license, that trial license you get that first year. So take advantage of it. Try out the work order functionality. Uh, next, we have, last but not least, in the capture measurements, we have the ability to assign a measurement to an asset. If you see here, that icon is represented by this little um, chain link, what looks like a chain link. So if we click on this, we can take the measurement reading and assign it to an asset uh, that we create right then and there. Or if we're regularly running a, a routine maintenance route, uh, we can assign it to an existing asset. So this is what that would look like. I could choose to assign this reading to my distribution panel, to my motor, um, to any type of asset I have. And if I haven't yet created one, I can do so on the fly. And what's great about that is it gives you the ability to track the asset health over time. So um, you can verify, you know, is the asset running hot? Is the chiller running hot? You can go back and check last month's reading or check the week before's reading to verify that your asset's health is still performing properly. If you're monitoring an HVAC unit, you can take readings from a variety of tools like the V3000FC, the A3000FC, or the T3000FC to check volts, amps, and temperature. And you can assign all of those different types of readings to the um, HVAC asset in the Fluke Connect software. And then at any time, you can go back and review the asset health for that asset. So now I'm going to show you in a recording that I made on how to capture, um, how to use the capture measurement option, options for both the in-app recordings and saving a single measurement, then going back into the app and viewing the measurements in the measurements tab. So here we have, we've got the tool and we've got the Fluke Connect mobile app. And we're going to repeat the process of connecting the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. And now, once we're connected, we're seeing the same reading on the tool as we are in the Fluke Connect mobile app. So we've got the two options available here for capturing this information. We can do a recording, an in-app recording, which is basically a mini log file, or we can save a single snapshot of this information. We'll start by using the record option. And you'll notice that the, the timer starts automatically and the view switches from a circle to a, a square. You'll also notice that the Bluetooth button here is flashing and I let this run for about 20 seconds and then I press the stop button to stop the recording and now you can see this is the recording that I made from within the Fluke Connect mobile app it's a very short recording I did this you know, yesterday, day before yesterday and at this point I can take this recording and I can assign it to an asset a work order, I can add some notes, I can add a voice note, I can share this reading with anybody via email, I can delete it and start over, or I can click the done button. Now in our case, we're gonna keep it simple and just click the done button. Next, we're going to click the, um, oh, one other thing I wanted to point out, you have two options at the top. You can view just the numeric reading or you can view the graph. Um, so here, if we switch to the graph view, not only do we get the numeric reading, but we get a graph, a visual graph display of what's happening while we're connected to the tool. 
Next, I click the Save button to save a single measurement. You can see that this is, instead of a graph, I've got a single measurement reading. And again, I can assign this to an asset, a work order, add notes, voice notes, share it, delete it, or just click the Done button. So now we've taken two different types of measurement readings. We've done an in-app recording or a mini log file, and we've taken a single snapshot uh, of the 376 FCD information. So we're gonna go back into the Food Connect homepage. So I use the back arrow button to get back to the homepage. And next we're gonna click the three lines in the upper left-hand corner to access the Food Connect mobile app menu. When we do that, we can see some of the different options available in the Fluke Connect mobile app. Now, what we've just done is we've captured measurements from our tool and saved them in the Fluke Connect mobile app. So that information will be stored under the measurements tab. So that's where we're going to go next. And here you can see the two different readings that we just took, the negative 0.7 amps along with the log file. And you can see the date and time stamps for those two different measurements as well. Once you do it once or twice, you take a, a reading using the capture measurements features, you'll, you'll be an old, old pro at this. It's not that hard to do. And it works, like I said, virtually the same way with most all of our tools. So the next section is using the data logging feature. We get a lot of questions about this in the technical support department, so I'm excited to share the different options you have available to you for data logging. So next, We'll cover the data logging options and the pros and cons of each. We'll start over here on the left. We'll give you a preview of the three different logging options you have av available. Option number one is data logging on the tool only, then connecting the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app to download the log file later. Option number two is very similar to option number one in that you're still logging data on the tool, but in this option, you will connect the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app before you log data on the tool so that you can also watch the log file on your Fluke Connect mobile app. And finally, we've got option number three. Option number three is different because you're not logging data on the tool, only in the app. I don't even consider this true logging because it's limited to a maximum recording time of 10 minutes, but it is still an option. So the pros for option number one are that you can log data for a long period of time. In some cases, this can be a 24 hour period. The length of time you can log is only limited to the amount of memory or space on the tool itself and the battery life. Many tools can log up to 64,000 readings too. So depending upon how you set up the measurement interval, you can have a fairly log log file. Now the cons of this is that you're not able to actually view the log while it's happening live. So it's only happening on the tool and you don't really have a display of it. You'd have to stand in front of the tool and watch the tool itself. In option number two, the pros are that you can still log for a long period of time or an intermediate period as the case may be, um, as long as you have enough memory and battery life on the tool. But here you can also view the live logging because you've connected your tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app before you started logging. What's great about this option is that you can watch for a few hours, then disconnect and go home and leave the tool in logging mode to continue logging while you have dinner. Now, the con of this option is that in order to view the live logging while it's happening, you must keep your phone near the tool. Because it's a Bluetooth connection, you can only move your phone within the Bluetooth range, so up to say around 10 meters away. And finally, last but not least, the third option, the pros are that you can easily and quickly start a log file and view it live. You saw how we just did that in the video. You just press the little red record button and let it run. Um, the cons are that because you're using the in-app recording, the maximum amount of recording time is 10 minutes. And again, you also do need to keep your phone near to the tool in order to stay connected so that you can view that log file. So now that we've covered the three logging options, let's take a closer look at option number one and how we do that. So step number one 
is to press the log button. Now in our case, the 376 FC doesn't have a dedicated log button, but you'll see that it does have the word log above the inrush button. So if I press and hold the inrush, inrush button for two seconds, the log will start. So I press and hold that button, and then I can check the tool display to verify that logging is in fact taking place. And you can see here that it says log. So that's how I can verify that the log is in fact running. Now, once I've logged for as long as I want to log, I can press and hold the, the log button down again to turn off the logging. And then I'll go through the process of connecting my tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app, just like we've done a couple times already. And once I'm connected, I use this little down arrow option. I click on that to download data from the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. So here we see a continuation of the screens. Once I click that down arrow, I'll get some additional information here. Um, and if I wanted to proceed, I could just click the download button here. And once I click the download button, I'll get a confirmation request from the app saying, are you sure you want to download data from the 376 FC? I can click OK, and then I let the download run. Now, what I want to point out is I can also see how much memory has been used on the tool, and this will help me determine how long this download is going to take. So I've got very little data on the tool, so this should be a relatively quick download. If my memory were almost full all the way over here, this download is going to take some additional time. And why that's important is because you need to keep your phone next to the tool during the entire duration of the download. If you pick up your if you start off the download process and grab your phone and go run to lunch, you've broken the connection between your tool and your mobile app and the download is going to fail. So this can take anywhere from, you know, in, I think in the case of this amount of data it took me about 30 seconds to you know, 30 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe I've got, you know, day or 24 hour log files on my tool. Those are going to be larger size files and they're going to take longer to download. So after the download has been uh, processed, I'll get a message pop up that says download successful, which is great. That's exactly what we want to see. So on that little screen, I click the OK button. And from there, I can view all of the downloads that I've um, taken from the tool and moved over to the Fluke Connect mobile app. I click the done button because I've reviewed the information and verified it looks good, click the done button. And at this point, I'll get a pop-up that says clear memory, delete downloaded data from 376 FC. This action cannot be undone. People often blow through the screen and don't really read it and they click the delete button and they wipe out all of the data on their tool, not realizing what they've just done. So until you've had a chance to thoroughly review the data, in the Fluke Connect account, I would recommend clicking the cancel button at this point. Click cancel, go back in, log into the account, verify all the data is there, it looks good. If it doesn't, you can always re-download the data if you haven't clicked the delete option. But again, if you click the delete option, poof, the data is gone from your tool. Okay, option number two, data logging option number two, these steps are in a little bit different order for this, but it's still basically the same set of steps. Instead of waiting until after the logging is done, step one is to connect your tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app first. Then step two is going to be to press the log button on the tool, just like we did before. And what's great about having your tool connected is that once the log file starts, you'll see this little logging message. So you'll see logging, so you'll know that logging is taking place on the tool, and you're able to view that logging functionality live. And again, you've got the two different ways to view the data. You can either view just the numeric like you see up here, or if you click on the graph, then you'll be able to see the numeric and the graph. And once we're done with the logging process, maybe we let it run for a half an hour, an hour or so, we press the log button on the tool again to stop the logging functionality. And we can download the log file from the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. So what we're doing now is we've just got a, a live connection between the tool and the app. So we're viewing this, this logging live, but it's not actually recording anything on the phone. We're just, we've just set up a, basically a window just to look at the tool. So we do still need to take the data from the tool and download it to the app. And we do that by clicking on the little eye icon. It, it turns from a down arrow to an eye icon once you've connected.
and then we proceed with the steps that you saw earlier in the um, the presentation. So next is data logging option number three, which we covered earlier, the in-app recording option. You press the record button to start the recording, press the stop button to stop it, and then again, you've got all these different options of what you want to do with this particular recording of this log file. So now let's watch a video of how to use the data logging option. We're going to watch how to use the first data logging option, which is to log data on the tool itself separately and then download it from the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. I think that's the most common, commonly used log file, log option. So I'm turning on the tool. I'm pressing the log button to activate the logging functionality on the tool. I can verify that it's actually logging by seeing the log word. I can also see how much memory is available on the tool by checking the little memory icon. I have plenty of memory because that's what that open space means. If it were all black there, that would mean my, log, my tool was almost full. The memory was almost full in my log file. So I let the log run for, I don't know, 15 seconds there. And then I press the log button again to stop the process. Now I want to download the log file from the tool to the mobile app. So I enable the Bluetooth functionality on the tool, verify it's working, click connect and capture, click the tool I want to connect to, wait for the connection to be established. Then I see the down arrow. So I can click on the down arrow to download the data. I click the download button to execute the download. I get a confirmation screen asking me if I really do want to download the data. I do, so I click OK. And here's where you have to keep the phone next to the tool during the duration of the download. Again, my tool has very little data on it, so it's going to happen very quickly. The more data you have on your tool, the longer this is going to take. So please just be patient, leave them next to each other, and let the download run until you get these, the message that the download was successful. So we get our download successful message, which is great. We can click the OK button on that. We can scroll through all of the data to look at the data that's been downloaded. We can assign it to an asset if we want. Or we can just click the Done button. And again, this is that warning message to tell you that if you hit the Delete option, it will erase all of the data on your 376 FC clamp meter. And this cannot be undone. There's no way to recover the data once you do this. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. Um, the next section or our last section is sharing measurements from the Fluke Connect mobile app where I, I will show you how to email the different types of measurements from the Fluke Connect mobile app to anyone. So here, um, here's how to share an in-app recording or log file. So um, again, once I press the record button and make a, a log file or recording, which you would see here, this is how it would look. Then I could click the universal share icon down here at the bottom left, and I've got four different options. I can share this as a CSV, an XLS, a graph, or a PDF. I can also check the box to send a copy of the email to myself so that I can see what's getting sent out. Um, now, because these are radio buttons, unfortunately, you can only select one option at a time. So I can't choose to send out a CSV and a PDF at the same time. I would have to go through the process twice, send the CSV the first time and send the PDF the next time. And the Android version of this looks slightly different, but it functions in basically the same way. So here's what the different file types would look like. If I had selected the CSV or XLS option, I would get a copy of the attached file here like this, and then I could just enter in the email address of the person that I want to send it to. And this is what the graph would look like. It just saves a copy of the graph into the email itself so I could send this. 
Um, this is the uh, person you're, this is the account you're signed into. So if it's your email address, you'd be seeing your email address there. And last but not least, you've got the PDF format, and this is what that would look like. So if we saved and shared a single measurement reading, we click on the save button. This is what that single measurement reading would look like. Then we click the share the share button there. We've only got three choices in this case for the single reading because there is no graph, so there's no graph to share. We could share it as a CSV, an XLS, or a PDF. And here's what that looks like. If we pick the CSV or XLS option, we've got um, the reading that will appear here in the actual body of the email along with an attached file. Um, with the PDF, we get the reading and then just a screenshot. And again, the um, Android version looks slightly different, but it works basically the same way. So, um, other Fluke resources that might be useful for you include the Fluke Connect website, and that is accessible to you at fluke.com. Go to from the fluke.com website, click on products, and then click on Fluke Connect, and you'll be able to see more information about Fluke Connect. At the beginning, I told you that this presentation would be recorded and would be available to you at a website. This is that website. The Fluke Connect workshop videos are available at fluke dot com slash quick start again that's fluke dot com slash quick start and then you'll want to pick on the the fourth tile over the one that says handheld tools uh, next if you were interested in learning more about the fluke connect software maybe the condition monitoring options with the 3540 power monitor or vibration products you could talk to the fluke connect sales department they'd be happy to schedule a demo for you if you have technical questions about the software itself, anything you've seen today, please contact our technical support team at 425-200-0080 or email us at fluke-connect-support at fluke.com. So anything you have questions about regarding the app, you know, how to share a file, how to capture a measurement, how to assign it to an asset, how to create an asset, anything within the Fluke Connect software, please contact us. If you have questions related to the hardware, maybe your thermal imager, the image is blurry on your screen, or your voltmeter is no longer detecting volts, those are hardware-related questions and would be best routed to the hardware support team. They can be reached at 800-443-5853 or the email address tech.support at fluke.com. And they would be able to help you troubleshoot the issues that you're having with your tool and work with you to schedule service for the tool or replace that tool. So that concludes the presentation portion of the Fluke Connect workshop. In the next day or so, you will all be receiving an email thanking you for attending, and it will include a link to the recording of this presentation and a link to register for the next Fluke Connect workshop on Thursday, April 28th. At the conclusion of this session, you will also be asked to provide feedback on the presentation in a short survey. It's only a handful of questions, so please take a moment to do so. We review all of the ratings and your comments and feedback. And I will be taking questions now. As a reminder, please keep questions to the topic we just covered. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording so that I can answer questions.